Welcome back to another little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to look at a way of creating groups out of values from a list using the loop macro. Um, there's a number of steps to understanding this last form down here. So we're going to go through them in order and we're going to see the behavior of loop and see how this works out. Okay, so we're going to start at the top. We have um, a loop that is going to iterate counting i below zero. And we can see this by two here. So we're going to print out the value. So we're going to loop from zero while it's below 10, but we're stepping by two. We can see that what gets printed out is zero, two, four, six, eight. So we started at zero. There's kind of an implicit uh, from zero here. And it kept looping while it was below 10, while i was below 10. And it was iterating i by two, increasing its value by two each time. And that gets us the 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. That's fine. As you can imagine, if we put 3 here, we get 0, 3, 6, 9. We're not going to worry about that for now. Just notice that by is a way of advancing the process. Now, having a, a number here is all well and good when i is a number as well. But in this case, um, i is going to be a value in this list. So let's just remove this for a second and print this out. You can see we print A, B, C, D, E, F. So each iteration, we're taking another value from this list and we're printing it. What does by mean in this case? Well, by is saying how to advance through the list. How do we get the rest of the list? And so we are going to use the function rest, for example, or we can use cutter. We'll switch to cutter in a second for reasons. But you can say um, we get the same thing again, A, B, C, D, E, F. So because we're just getting the rest of the list each time. We're just going by one step. So let's change that to coulda. Just see that it's the same behavior. What happens here if we use C to DR, which if you remember, let's do this. We have A, B, and C. Let's put D in here as well, just for clarity. Coulda advances two down the list. So this is the rest of the list, and this is the rest of the rest of the list, and so on. So by using kudada here, we are going to be advancing by two steps. Notice we go A, C, E. And this is going to be important. If we do with three Ds, then we do A and D. We're stepping by three each time. So we're stepping the list by a certain amount. So that's cool. In fact, I'm going to put this back to kudada, and we have our CDDR version here, A, C, E. Good. So these are another two things just to be aware of as we go through. The next thing is that you can de do destructuring in a loop. We've probably looked at this before as well. Um, but it has some interesting things. So let's do this first, actually. So we have a list with sublists. And we're going to destructure these sublists into x and y. So a will go to x, b will go to y, and then we're going to print out x and y down here. This little arrow just for clarification. Um, and we're still going to be advancing by CDR. This is this is essentially implicit. So we don't need it. Um, if we do this, we can see A, B, D, E. That's fine. We can put the by back in. You can see that it still works just fine. Um, what if we have too many values here? Well, this is fine with a loop macro set. If there's too many values, it's just going to ignore the rest of them. It's only going to use, only going to destructure out uh, the ones that it need. This is different from destructuring bind, and that's why I'm pointing it out right now. There's also another thing. What if you have too few values? Okay, so we've got A and D in here. Each of these sublists is only one element long, but this is expecting two elements. Let's run it and see that the unmatched element is just left as nil. Okay, so we have um, quite a few bits here. Oh, actually, let's put in one more before we get to the last bit. Let's see what happens um, if we just use on, because on isn't something people have used a lot. Well, don't use so much in loop. So if I run this, we can see that on means that we're binding the entire list uh, to this variable on each iteration. And then we're passing through the list. So the first iteration, x is bound to the whole list, and then it's bound to the rest of that list, and then it's bound to the rest of that list, and it goes down until we run out of things. So what happens now? If we advance by 2, and we take two things from this list that we're iterating on each time. We get pairs. So the first list is going to be all of this, right? And so it's going to be destructured onto this. So x is going to become 1, y is going to become 2, and then the rest are going to be ignored because it's the same as this situation up here. 
And then we're going to use by to advance two steps. So we're going to step over these ones. And so now the new list is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 3 is going to get bound to, to x and 4 is going to get bound to y and the rest is going to be ignored because it doesn't fit. And that gets us 3 and 4. And so on it goes. But this allows us to group things. So if you need three of them, you can do x, y, z. You can buy, buy c, d, d, r. Uh, d, 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 all the Ds, doesn't matter how many. <laughs> we do this, and you notice that we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and anything that is not available because of this rule here is going to be set to nil. So this last one where we run out of values, we get nil. It's a little, a little curiosity. It's not appropriate in every case, but sometimes it can be just the thing you need, and loop is always available. All right, see you in the next little bit of Lisp.